Hello everyone. Welcome to Amazon Software Webcast. In this video guide, we will be installing and configuring Windows Deployment Service on Windows Server 2019. For this video guide, I am using the test lab created in a virtual box. What is Windows Deployment Service? Windows Deployment Service is what we use to deploy operating system on a network computers. This means we won't have to go to each computer with a USB stick to install and set up windows manually further it allows us to deploy windows operating system on multiple clients at the same time thus it will reduce the overall installation time before we move ahead we need to check certain things like deployment server must be either domain member server or a domain controller as you want to use with active directory we need a properly configured dns server to provide a name resolution as well as we need a dhcp server with a dhcp pool to provide ip addresses to the pxe clients for this demo we have windows server 2090 vm with the host name ws2k19-dc01 this is a root domain controller for mylab.local domain as we have single domain active directory forest on this server we have already installed and configured active directory domain service and dns with dhcp service for testing purpose we want to install and configure wds on our domain controller if you can afford a separate server it will be the best one first let me show you the dhcp service configuration already i have opened dhcp management console you can open dhcp management console from the server manager dashboard by clicking on tools and selecting dhcp as you can see here already i have created one ip version 4 scope with the address pool 172.18.72.100 to 172.18.72.254 let me show the dns manager as well on the server already we have up and running dns service as well let's right click on our server name to check ns lookup let's select launch ns lookup and as you can see our server is also responding properly so we have a dhcp service as well as we have a dns service Let's close this. Let's minimize this console and this console as well. Let's start the installation of WDS service on this server. On server manager console, I'm going to click on manage and here I'm going to click on add roles and features. Click on next on before you begin screen. It is a role based or feature based installation. So simply we need to click on next button. Already our local server is selected. So let's click on next. From server role console, we need to select Windows deployment services. So let's select the checkbox. Click on add features to add required features. Click on next. Next again. Here you can read brief overview information about WDS. Under things to note, you can verify that deployment server requires that DHCP and DNS service available on your network. Let's click on next. Here it is asking us to select role services. Already as you can see both checkboxes are selected for deployment server and transport server. Here I am going to select both and then after I am going to click on this next button. Now let's click on install to start the installation process. As you can see installation has been completed successfully. Let's click on close to close this button. After installing WDS server role, next we need to configure the WDS service. To do so, we need to open WDS Management Console. On Server Manager Console, you need to click on Tools. And here, we need to click on Windows Deployment Services to open the Management Console. Let's maximize the console. Let's click on Servers. And let's click on our server name. As you can see, here it is telling us that Windows Deployment Services is not configured. So we need to configure it first. To do that, we simply need to right click here and select configure server now here on before you begin screen it is telling us that ensure that the following requirements are met first if you want to use active directory domain services that time your server must be member of your active directory domain or maybe a domain controller but if you want to use standalone mode and that time active directory is not necessary second there must be an active dhcp server on the network to provide ip addresses to pxc clients Third, there must be an active DNS server to provide a name resolution. And the last, a server has an NTFS file system partition on which it is going to store the images. 
So already I have created one separate partition to store this boot image and install image. So we are going to store on our data rail. Let's minimize it and let's click on next. We want to use integrated with Active Directory options and that's why we are going with the default selection. Let's click on next. It is telling us that where you want to store remote installation folder. By default, as you can see, the path is mentioned, but simply we are going to change the drive later because we want to store remote installation folder on a D drive. Let's click on next button. On this console about proxy DHCP server configuration, we need to select both checkboxes as we have installed DHCP server rule on local server. We are going to click on next button. Now here I am going to select respond to all client computers known and unknown. And if you want, you can select the checkboxes as well to require administrator approval for unknown computers to start the deployment. But as we are just going for the testing purpose, that's why I don't want to enable manual approval for unknown computers. So in future, if you want to change these settings, you can definitely change it from the properties of your server. Fine. I'm going to click on next button and let's wait to finish the configuration settings. Okay, here as you can see configuration is completed, but the service did not start within a timely fashion. So we need to manually start the service. Let's click on finish button to complete this. And let's right click here, click on all tasks and let's manually start the service. If you want, you can also use services.msc console to restart the windows deployment services. Fine, here we are receiving message that successfully started windows deployment services. Let's click on OK button. And verify you have here green play button to make sure everything is working fine. So now we have installed and configured WDS in Windows Server 2019. The next step is to add the WDS image that you want to deploy on your network. But before we do that, let me show something on a D drive first. You can verify one folder is there with the name remote install. Let's right click on this folder, go for the properties. Click on sharing tab and here you can verify that this folder is shared. From this shared folder, our PXC clients are going to get boot image and install image. Let's click on OK. Let's double click on this folder to verify the subfolders. You can verify lots of subfolders are created. Now we are going to add boot image and install image to deploy operating system using this WDF service. First of all, I'm going to click on this, this PC. And here you can verify that already I have attached the ISO image of Windows 10 operating system. Uh, before you proceed, please make sure that you already insert image of the operating system which you want to deploy in your server in the form of either DVD or the ISO image. Fine. Let's go back to our WDS management console. First of all, we are going to add boot image. So let's click on boot image, right click here and select add boot image. It will ask us to specify the location of the boot image. Let's click on browse button. Click on this PC. And here we are going to select the drive letter F. That is the drive letter of our setup disk. Let's double click on it. Now you need to double click on sources folder. So let's double click on it. And here boot.vim image is there. So let's select it. Click on next. And here you can verify that image name and image description is there. So here I'm going to add Microsoft Windows 10 because this image is of Windows 10. Fine. Because in this demonstration, we are using Windows 10 to add boot image and install image in our WDS. And later we will use this image to deploy Windows 10 using WDS as well. Okay, let's click on next button. Click on next. It will take a time to add this boot image. Fine, as you can see, we are saying message that the operation is completed. The selected image was successfully added to our WDS server. Let's click on finish to close this console. So now here you can verify we have a one boot image and image name is there, which we have specified Microsoft Windows 10 setup x64 bit. Fine, now we are going to add install image. Let's right click here. And here you have two options. If you want to create an image group, that time you can first create an image group and then after you can add install image. But suppose by chance if you click on add install image initially, that time it will also ask you to provide the image group name first. 
Suppose if you have an existing image group, that time you are able to select this option. Here I am giving the name client OS to our image group. Let's click on next. Again it is asking us to specify the location. So let's click on browse button and already we have selected the location that we are going to use. It is on a app drive and under sources folder. Let's select the install.vim file. Let's click on next. And here you can see this is the image which I have downloaded from Microsoft TechNet website. So all additions are there like Windows 10 Home Edition and so on. But for this demonstration, I'm going to clear all the checkboxes. We just want to use Windows 10 Pro Edition, fine. Say so you can choose this as per your requirement and might be in your case, uh, these options will be a little bit different. Because uh, I'm using Windows 10 ISO image which I have downloaded from Microsoft TechNet website. Let's click on next. Click on next again. And this process will take some time to complete because WDS server is copying the install.vim image from our installation media to our local server. Fine, as you can see we are saying message that the operation is completed. We have successfully added the Windows 10 install.vim image to our WDS server. Let's finish the result by clicking on the finish button. So here you can verify that our image group is also there, client OS and under that you can verify Windows 10 Pro image is there with the 64 bit architecture. So finally we are done with the WDS basic configuration. Now we can use our WDS server to deploy Windows 10 operating system using Windows deployment services to our network computers using PXC clients. That we are going to see in the next video. That's it for this video demonstration. Thank you all for watching this video.